Okay, we have started to look at units of measure. We saw that some of them are our base units and some of them are derived units. We looked at mass and we looked at volume. Now we're going to be looking at two other units of measure and that is density and temperature. Now density is another derived unit, but temperature is a base unit and we'll talk about the units for that. We're also going to talk about the difference between an intensive property and an extensive property as we look through this lesson. So let's look at the definition of density. Density is derived by taking the mass over the volume and it's got the SI units of kilograms per cubic meter. Now kilograms per cubic meter are in no way a common way for us to talk about the units in this class in chemistry. It is the SI unit, okay? But it is more common for us to look at the other ways of doing it. Very common for us to talk about it in terms of grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. And in terms of those units, one gram per cubic centimeter would be equivalent to a thousand kilograms in a cubic meter because a cubic meter is so much more, is so much larger compared to the um, milliliter or the cubic centimeter. Okay, so here is the equation for density. Density is mass over volume. So you could use any mass unit on the top and any volume unit on the bottom and it would be a density calculation. We just more commonly in here will want to have either our mass in grams or kilograms or our volume in cubic centimeters, milliliters, in a far out chance, maybe cubic meter, uh, those would be the common ones that we would use. So let's look at some, uh, this would be the shortened way of writing that. Density is mass over volume, where mass is abbreviated with an M and volume is abbreviated with a V. So that's a quick way and maybe the one that we would want to memorize. So we're going to work through this problem here in which, um, you know, if you were just calculating density, and let me just write the formula up here at the top, um, density equals mass over volume, okay? And if you wanted to calculate density, we just have to need to plug in the mass and we need to plug in the volume. But in this problem, we're actually given density. Density is 21.5 grams per cubic minute. Uh, cubic centimeter. So we know that value here. And in this problem, we're given volume. So we know that value. And we're being asked to calculate the mass of this object. So when I work this problem, I would take this equation and I'm going to algebraically solve for the variable I'm looking for. So I would need to multiply. I'm going to write it this way. Density is mass over volume. I'm going to multiply both sides by volume and that way the volume cancels and we're left with volume times density equals mass. And now I can plug in the information that is given to me here in the problem. My volume was 4.49 and it's in units of cubic centimeters. My density is given to me as 21 0.5, and that's in units of grams per cubic centimeters. Notice how I'm writing it. I will write it over above and below each other instead of on the diagonal like we see in the given problem there. When I multiply these numbers on my calculator, I will get a value of 96.5, okay? And the units will be grams because when you take centimeters cubed on the top and centimeters cubed on the bottom, those units will cancel each other out. And so that will be my value of the mass of this object of platinum. All right, let's continue to the next one. In this one, kind of interesting, it says what human fat has, a density of 0.918 grams per cubic centimeter, and they want to know if a person lost 10 pounds, now I'm telling you that 10 pounds is 4,500 grams, of nothing but fat, how much volume would they have actually lost in their body? So let's choose a different color here for this one. And let's work through this problem. We once again will start with our formula. Density equals mass over volume. But in this example, we're wanting to solve for volume. Now, so many students do this incorrectly. They get the mass over here, but leave the volume 
in the denominator and we can't do that. So I need to get the volume out of the denominator. There's many different ways to do the algebra for this, but let's get the volume off the bottom by multiplying both sides by volume. This gets us back up to what we had up here. Volume times density equals mass. But what I'm wanting to solve for is the volume. So I will divide both sides by density. Okay, and that will give me that the volume is mass over density. So for this problem, we are going to now plug the numbers in that they gave me. I need to use the mass in units of grams, so I'm going to use the 4,500 grams, and the density is 0 0.918, and the units are grams per cubic centimeters. Now this shows me that I would divide those two numbers. As I divide those two numbers, I get uh, 4,900, okay, and the unit that's going to be left for me is cubic centimeters. But not everybody's going to see that right off the bat. Why is it cubic centimeters? How do I know what cancels? I want to remind you of something that you've learned along the way about uh, dividing by a fraction. When you divide by a fraction, which is what I'm doing here, I'm dividing by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. Now we see that the grams are canceling and we are indeed left with the cubic centimeters for this problem. So that is solving for all the possible variables. We could solve just for density by plugging in mass and volume. In this problem we solve for mass. We solve for it and plug those values in and in the green one here we see that we are solving for the volume. Now later, as we learn a tool called dimensional analysis, we'll learn how to work these problems and not have to stop and do the algebraic manipulations for these problems. But it's a good practice and your algebra skills are very important for us in these problems. Okay, so we've got ourselves a um, uh, density as a unit, I need to talk about a couple terms called uh, extensive properties and intensive properties. What's the difference? So when you make a measurement or you uh, make an observation, some of them will be extensive and that is a property that depends upon how much matter is being considered. So that's an extensive property. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we measured the mass. Mass is a measure of the quantity of matter. Okay? If you measure how much mass there is, if there's more, it's going to have more mass. If there's less, it's going to have less mass. So that is definitely an extensive property. We've got volume. And volume, if you've got a lot of coke, two liter, okay, that is a bigger volume. And if you have just a little glass of it, that's a different, it depends upon how much you have. And we'd have different values depending upon how much we have. But not everything is an extensive property. Some of them are intensive properties. Intensive properties are properties that do not depend upon how much matter is being considered. So we've got ourselves um, examples of intensive properties. And since we just talked about density, density is the one I want to include on here. Density um, is mass over volume, remember? So let's consider having a small object. If we have a small object, it's going to have a small mass, but it's also going to have a small volume. If I have twice as big of an object, it's going to have twice the mass, but it's going to have twice the volume. So when we divide those two things, it's going to have exactly the same value. So even though the mass and the volume are extensive, the density itself is intensive. Some other things that might be considered intensive properties would be melting point. Doesn't matter whether it's a big ice cube or a small ice cube, it's going to melt at the same temperature. Color, doesn't matter whether your shirt comes in extra large or extra small. If it's red, it's red. It doesn't depend upon the amount. Now the way I keep this straight in my mind is that intensive properties has the N in it and not has an N in it, so it does not depend on, upon the property of its intensive. So the next unit we want to look at, measurement, is the temperature scale. Now the temperature scale, that's the SI unit, is the Kelvin scale. And if you take the Celsius scale and add 273.15, you will get to the Kelvin scale. The Kelvin scale, like I said, is the SI scale. But we very, very often will work problems actually in the Celsius scale. As you look at these three thermometers, 
we'll see if you just compare the Kelvin scale and the Celsius scale. If you compare where water freezes, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius for Celsius and 273 Kelvin because you're adding 273 um, to it and that's where water will freeze. Where water will boil is up there at 100 degrees for Celsius scale. If you added 273, you're at 373 for the Kelvin scale. So the magnitude of each degree is exactly the same on both of those scales. Now one of the scales that we use very commonly here in the United States is the um, Fahrenheit scale. And if you look at the temperature at where water freezes, it freezes at 32 and it boils at 212 and the size of each scale is different. So if we look at the equation that compares the two, the 9 fifths times the degree Celsius plus 32, the 32 is to help us get to the same equivalent point at where water freezes, the 0 and the 32. But the 9 fifths takes into account that the Fahrenheit scale in between each degree is different. Okay, so now we've got these three comparisons of these three common temperature scales. Now, um, and we see those relationships that I talked about there coming up on the screen. What we want to do is we want to just work a problem where we're doing the algebra of converting from degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. In this problem, I'm given to you that we have 172.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's start by writing the equation that we have there. The temperature in Fahrenheit, okay, is equal to 9 fifths the temperature in Celsius plus 32. Okay, and now we're given that we have 172.9 degrees Fahrenheit and we're trying to determine the Celsius. What I'm going to do is solve for the Celsius first. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides, okay? And that's going to give me the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 is equal to 9 fifths the temperature in Celsius. Now I want to get the 9 fifths over to the other side, so I have to multiply both sides by 5 ninths. Okay, now I have to multiply this whole thing by 5 ninths, not just uh, um, the fifth Fahrenheit, so I have to do that whole portion there. That's going to cancel this and leave me with 5 ninths times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, is equal to, sorry, well, that's not 32 degrees Celsius, it's just 32, and we'll scribble that out and it doesn't erase very well, but you get the picture. Okay, so this and the degrees Celsius. And now we're finally ready to plug in the value that I was given in the problem. We have a temperature of 172.9. We are going to subtract from it the 32, and when we do this calculation, that will give to us the temperature in Celsius. And the value for this temperature in Celsius is going to actually be 78.3 degrees Celsius. Now, this equation that I have written up here at the very top, okay, and I'll put a box around it, this part right here, okay, that is the equation that relates the two. Um, it's very unusual for us to actually test you on this because so many, even the basic calculations, have as a one-punch function, conversion between degrees Celsius and degree Fahrenheit. So we're not going to want to penalize those people who don't have that. But there are going to be times that you're going to be given the temperature in Fahrenheit and you need it in Celsius and you'll have to be able to either work through this or have the button on your calculator. But make sure that on your calculator you know how to use that if you've got it or if you don't have it you can do this conversion because we only let you use certain calculators um, in our class. Um, it's much more common for you to have to do the other one where you are going from Kelvin and Celsius. So you take your temperature in Celsius, plus 273. If you have extra sig figs and decimal points, you're going to need to add that 0.15. That's just an add and subtract um, problem. It's not a big deal. But you need to keep that number in mind, and you probably will because you use it a lot in this class.